Hi, welcome everybody to session 4BA, Modern UX UI Guidelines in the World of Mainframe. Um, and we've got two fantastic speakers from the IBA group. So gentlemen, um, over to you, have a good session. Thank you. Uh, hi everybody. Uh, so Valentin, could you uh, go forward with the slides? Okay, I think we should uh, present uh, ourselves before we start. So, no. uh, okay. I am Valentin. I'm, I'm working as a Java JavaScript developer in the IBA group. Uh, today we will uh, uh, discuss uh, such topic as uh, UX UI guidelines, uh, how to uh, make this UX more intelligent. So, uh, Vladislav, give you the floor. Uh, okay, so uh, as for me, I'm Vladislav and uh, I'm from IBA Group. Uh, I'm a team leader at uh, two projects uh, in here, and uh, I'll start with that. Uh, so today in this speech, we would like to touch upon such an issue as modern UI UX uh, in the mainframe environment. Uh, this topic uh, has often been and uh, is the subject of discussion, not only for the mainframe environment, but also for other spheres. Uh, and uh, many decisions made in one favor or another may not uh, always have a good effect on the friendliness and usability of the environment. Many people, especially young professionals, uh, will agree with us that uh, the mainframe is lagging behind the modern concepts of the user interface. And uh, that's why we are here. And uh, now we will give you a completely different perspective on how mainframe development can be much easier and more convenient. Okay, so let's take a look at a typical modern developer stack. Often young professionals do not want to waste time on complex technologies and prefer to use, use uh, what is written uh, about a lot and uh, which is intuitive. As the first programming language based on our knowledge, uh, something from JavaScript, Java, Python, C Sharp is chosen. So, while well, it's in, uh, could you go back with the slides because uh, it's uh, the, the wrong one? Yeah, thank you. Um, this is logical uh, since the languages uh, with their capabilities solve most of the modern problems uh, for companies of different directions, uh, which creates a high demand uh, for such specialists. Uh, as far as databases are concerned, uh, this is already the specificity, specificity of companies. Some people prefer relational databases for uh, their needs, uh, others, uh, prefer document oriented. Uh, at a certain point in, point, uh, in time, uh, everything depends on the people themselves, uh, uh, what they choose. Uh, and uh, it is uh, in this area, uh, the responsibility for knowledge of the technology is placed uh, nevertheless on the shoulders of the company. Uh, so the most used operating systems are Windows, Linux, Mac OS, uh, Android, iOS. Uh, this is an indisputable uh, factor in modern. Uh, this is indisputable uh, fact. Uh, these operating systems have a user-oriented interface. Everything in them is aimed at making it convenient for the user to work in them. Uh, and in, in addition, uh, the convenience is uh, also do not stand still and are constantly being improved. Uh, the most important factor in modern uh, development is the IDE. Uh, depending on the functions provided, the user tends to choose one or another editor. Uh, the competition in this environment is quite tough uh, with its current and former giants. Uh, modern editors provide so many possibilities that uh, often we do not even suspect about all of them. <clears throat> oh, no, I think, could you go back? Okay, thank you. Uh, where does this all lead to? Uh, First of all, uh, to the fact that modern developers uh, prefer convenience over the complexity of the technologies being studied. Uh, now anyone, even a former worker at the factory can become a specialist in the IT field. 
uh, by taking appropriate courses. Uh, in addition, experienced specialists also adhere to the choice of a faster and uh, more convenient development method. Uh, this doesn't mean that the tasks uh, that were previously no uh, <clears throat> that were previously no longer need to be solved. Uh, and here by tasks we mean architectural uh, design, writing code itself, etc. Uh, it only means that the old problems go away. Uh, the time to solve some of them is greatly reduced, and uh, there is time for more significant problems, relatively uh, old ones. An example. Uh, of how in the modern world it is possible to create and launch a project in Java. Uh, we need to perform literally four actions, uh, after which uh, every, everything will be done by itself for us. <clears throat> and uh, this is just one example of how one's long-term problems are transferred to the development environment, uh, freeing the developer from additional tasks. <clears throat> So now let's uh, move on to the mainframe developer stack. Uh, the first thing uh, a modern developer has in common with a mainframe developer is uh, learning the Java language. As already mentioned, uh, Java is a fairly uh, easy to learn programming language. So people tend to learn it more willingly. Uh, also a good place to start for, for a novice developer is Python. Uh, it is also treated warmer than other languages. Uh, the situation is different with languages such as C, C++, Cabal, PL1, GCL, <clears throat> uh, and uh, high-level assembler. Yeah, uh, and in the chat, the, the, the message from uh, Stuart, uh, if you uh, have any questions, uh, feel free to ask us and uh, we will uh, give all the answers at the end because uh, the time is precious and yeah, we need to tell all of uh, our expectations and things in our uh, minds. Yeah, um, but Valentina, I think it is the wrong presentation because uh, here will be some uh, icons and images. So could you switch off, uh, switch uh, the presentations? <laughs> oh. Ah, uh, here it is, yeah. Uh, the problem is mm. <laughs> <Got it. laughs> okay okay let's move on <clears throat> while c c plus plus developers can still master it as a technology in demand uh, with other languages everything is much more complicated because they are particular uh, particularly uh, uh, they practically mainframe specific. Uh, uh, as for the database used uh, for a mainframer, uh, it is most often DB2, but uh, here it all depends on the specifics of the project and the company. Uh, naturally, uh, the typical operating systems uh, used are ZOS and uh, USS, uh, since uh, most of the time the mainframe developer has to work with them. Accordingly, the ID used in this is uh, the 3270 terminal. Some add-ons to it, if possible. Eclipse-based IDEs, uh, Visual Studio Code, uh, which has excellent extensions created by the Zoe community in recent years. Uh, so what is visible on the stack for a mainframe developer? The first is that IDs based on Eclipse uh, are already outdated. Most of them were developed in the zeros uh, and have changed a little since then. Uh, to use the, the 3270, you must at least be already an expert in this area to use it, uh, or you need to put in a lot of effort to understand it. Visual Studio Code is a good code editor, but it is quite uh, oversaturated with ex extensibility points, some of which are not always necessary. Therefore, though extension has a series of known dialog boxes uh, that pop up on every user action. In addition, the IntelliJ platform has a considerable base of developers who prefer to use uh, this particular IDE, but they not yet have this opportunity due to the lack of normal support for the mainframe. 
That's all we know. Let's repeat this. Uh, working with the mainframe through the 3217 in nutshell, uh, a typical combination is to lock in at uh, 3.4. Next, the developer needs uh, uh, to edit the program code. At the same time, he's faced with such problems as the lack of autocorrect, the lack of smart factoring, and uh, they don't have uh, any code analyzers. <clears throat> Of course, when you know the whole, uh, the whole platform by heart, so it won't be difficult for you, but uh, imagine how severe the headache will be for those who have just become uh, acquainted uh, with this environment. Ultimately, you, you'll need to <clears throat> run the code. Uh, let's say it's uh, GCL. Uh, you have launched uh, the program. You're waiting for it to uh, be executed. It was executed with, uh, with some return code. Uh, and it is good if it is less than eight. Even if everything uh, went well, you may sometimes need to see what is happening in the logs, which can be a canvas of 10,000 and more lines. Uh, considering the work in the terminal, the study of logs in this size, even with the search capabilities, uh, is another headache uh, on which you can waste a lot of time. Mm -hmm. In addition, sometimes developers have to change the place of work. This is not always a developer's problem. Situations are different, but fact is fact. And uh, often the problem is uh, uh, the problem of living uh, this industry at the moment is tied to the inconvenience uh, of working with uh, such high quality products and bad UI UX development in this sphere. Uh, and what does he get at the exit? Of course, this is not the most outdated stack, but sometimes recruiters are shocked when they hear about something mainframe specific uh, along with technologies such as Java, Python, C, C++, because they don't know how to apply those technologies in their sphere. So let me go on. Uh, you are on mute. Sorry, I think I've gone mute. <laughs> so, uh, we discussed what solutions can be used to interact with the mainframe. But today, a fairly large number of developers use not only VS Code and natives uh, to write their programs, but also some other modern and pleasant editors. Of course, so many people, so many might. But what can be offered to those people who don't want to use existing solutions to interact with the mainframe, who think that these editors are not effective and not comfortable to use? There was no answer to this question until this moment. Uh, of course, we are talking about IntelliJ-based development environments. We haven't mentioned such ideas as IntelliJ IDEA, PyCharm, Silayon and other products of the JetBrains community. Uh, JetBrains is a leading global manufacturer of professional development tools with offices in Prague, uh, St. Petersburg, Moscow, and other famous cities. cities. Since uh, Zeros, the company has been pr producing full-featured, powerful, and easy-to-use software products for development in Java, C Sharp, .NET, Objective-C, Python, Ruby, and other languages. Thanks to use of modern technologies, JetBrains tools significantly improve the quality of the code and increase the productivity of the programmers, freeing them from uh, gray routine. But before we will demonstrate what uh, demonstrate what to offer those so of us who love JetBrains products, let's dive into the world of the OS, the OS UX UI. So why do the beginners run away from developing for the mainframe? Why do we always have a lack of staff in this sphere? From my own experience, I want to say that I also studied the OS courses. There were about 15 of us and only two decided to stay in this sphere. The reason is, the reason is obvious. A beginner opened the OS terminal for the first time and saw this. It's a horrible picture that hurts your eyes. Harsh greens on black background. But colors are the smallest problem of UI that a beginner will get. 
he opens this uh, terminal and what's next? What should he do to just edit the file? You need to give a three or four lectures uh, to explain how the file system works, how to create a file, how to edit it. And, uh, and we even don't mention how to run programs in GCL tasks how to install products and update them and many, many other aspects of working with the mainframe. For many skilled people in the mainframe, there is a list of the option, options presented in the 3270 black screen. You can be an expert and have multiple makers, but this constant can be pretty challenging for those of us who start working with the mainframe for the first time. So on first image, we have many of types. Uh, this list, this list, this list. And we cannot define which of these list tabs are standard for the desired one. Also, many of the tabs have really strange names. For example, ESPFCU4. What is that? I actually cannot remember. As I remember, GMWELC stands for SMPE, but it is not accurate info. So as you can see, there is a lot of confusion and problems with it. You should always keep in mind which tab uh, contains uh, the required data set and what uh, each tab means. And if you don't remember, then you need to spend time looking through all the tabs. Uh, the second image presents us how many framers work with copying and pasting text. Simply said how we edit our code. So we need to provide some strange comments on the left side of the editor. We have to put some characters uh, like uh, C or A, then push enter and hope that everything will work well. Yes, uh, we understood that those uh, people who work with a lot with uh, SPF editor are really familiar with that. But for newbies, it is actually a challenge. Uh, yeah, and the last picture demonstrates all the terrifying parts of the black screen, uh, screen design. It looks like a terminal that reminds a bit of jail. So the only option while you're working in this terminal is just to look on the black screen with green text. So, and what about language support in the SPF editor? Yeah, the mainframe even supports language highlighting. But is it possible to rely on this highlighting? Can the editor give you a hint with variants of code elements that might be placed here? Can it underline warnings with yellow wavy lines? Can it help you to debug your program? Of course, the, the answer is obvious to all these questions. Definitely not. On this slide, we can see is JavaScript code example. It has just three or four colors we cannot even distinguish by color method call from a variable declaration. You can say that this highlighting is neat only in order for at least something to be. So what do we do if uh, we want to learn some new language or technology today? I think most of us go to YouTube, enter something like maybe JavaScript lessons or something like that watch some educational videos, open after a favorite code editor or IDE, and after some minutes, congratulations. Uh, we achieved our first program. You don't need to read tons of information even to create a file to edit and start writing code. In modern, uh, so let's go to the next slide. slide. In modern apps, uh, a user doesn't need to read some user guides or manuals. Uh, he, he can just look at the interface and immediately understand what this or those elements actually mean. But meanwhile, the 3270 black screen looks like a labyrinth with a monitor. As you can see, the picture shows us most beginners trying to figure out how to start their job. Not even speaking about where and how to find the result of the, its execution. So summarizing all, uh, we can definitely say that the mainframe uh, is thoroughly lacking adequate design. So, Vlad? Okay, thank you. Uh, so, let's start with transforming E3270 into intelligent interface, which, uh, since it is our current goal, 
to attract new developers to the industry with a smooth and painless entry. Um, all this was in order to lead you to our idea uh, to create a plugin for the mainframe on the IntelliJ platform. Uh, main ideas when creating the first is make uh, interaction with the mainframe so easy that even a student uh, could figure out uh, without reading a few books. The second is no complicated configurations. All you need to configure is a connection to the mainframe and your working set, like a profile description of what you are working with. And the third thing is uh, to follow the user mode of operation, such in IntelliJ, making the interface as modern as possible. And so together with this in mind, we decided to create our own plugin for working with the mainframe, which is a free open source solution based on IntelliJ platform. As we initially implied, this plugin intends to simplify the life of those people who either do not need all the functionality of the mainframe or find it difficult to enter the industry completely through other ways of working with it. <clears throat> this solution is for those who already work with the IntelliJ platform uh, and do not want to use other editors for some reason, or on the contrary, wants to change another platform to the IntelliJ because it is more comfortable. Fortunately, we didn't have to fill up the pumps because uh, there are already pioneers in this area, although not on the IntelliJ platform. Zoe Open Mainframe project has an extensive code base with a community that constantly maintains it. Uh, with the help of these guys, we managed to avoid uh, mistakes in plugin development, drawing the best ideas from those uh, that uh, have already been implemented. The second, but no less important platform is IBM Z Explorer. Uh, Formerly, it is uh, main master the mainframe. In this environment, developers can learn many new mainframe-specific technologies, even without any prior knowledge. We also drew our ideas from this platform. Uh, so now let's talk about uh, how easy it is to start using this solution. Uh, all you need is an IntelliJ-based editor and internet access. Uh, now we go to the JetBrains marketplace, uh, click on the install button, and bam, you're almost uh, ready to go. Just like in your smartphone. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the main advantages of our plugin are security and dumbware file system which means that uh, the developer is not responsible for the files he uses. Uh, here we mean that breaking something when using the plugin is an almost impossible task. Uh, the advantage of walking through a plugin is that uh, the data is stored in RAM. Uh, this doesn't mean, uh, mean that the RAM will be completely clocked with some, uh, some file and every, everything will stop working. It just means that we don't use uh, much data to work uh, with, which makes the plugin stand out as a lightweight solution. To ensure that nothing could break suddenly when working in parallel with the mainframe, we use optimized fetch and refresh operation, which allow us to constantly track uh, any changes both, both on the mainframe side and on the plugin side. At the same time, we uh, exclude any duplication of data to save user space. Uh, the plugin includes a huge number of features to, for working with the operating system. And the most striking example is uh, drag and drop operations in both the directions, uh, both within uh, one operating system and between the OS and USS. Uh, the main advantage in plugin development is attracting people to contribute to our repository. Uh, we made our project an open source solution, which allows us uh, to offer our changes to the code to anyone who wants to participate in it. Um, so let's compare our product with uh, what is available for mainframe development at the moment. Uh, on the left, uh, you see an example of uh, how we can search for the information we need in uh, 
3270 on the right for comparison is uh, the file tree displayed through the plugin. As you can see, the difference seats in the convenience and speed in, of information retrieval is enormous. And uh, remember how maybe you once wrote a very cool feature that performs some useful actions, but suddenly forgot where you put it uh, because there are a lot of data sets and it is now impossible to search for it. So now it is possible. And the last thing before we dive into the details, surely you know that most programming languages uh, now allow you to apply highlighting and auto correction, auto completion on themselves. Uh, well, mainframe languages are no exception, and we are going to prove it with our product. Uh, on the screen, you see only one example of what we are planning to implement, and in some places, we haven't already implemented it. Uh, okay. Let's move on to some specifics. So, yeah, uh, the first thing that we need to do is to create the possibility to make data operations. It's just a way to reorganize the structure of data that's stored on the mainframe and rework its design. The main proposition is to make this UI very clear to use. So uh, how can we, can we do it? Uh, let's take a look at the principles that guided us. Uh, the first principle, uh, single toolbar. Yeah, we, can, uh, we came up with a single tool, toolbar just as a Zoe VS Code extension. All the data is stored in a single toolbar, so you don't need to have multiple tabs open and you don't need to keep always in mind what type do we need to navigate for. So the second UI decision, uh, all data stores as a structured tree, like in modern products projects. Pretty cool, yeah? So to start uh, your first plugin experience, you just need to push the plus button uh, and the plugin just will lead you to success. So you will uh, have everything set it up properly and you will not have to spend a lot of time thinking about what particular buttons I should click next. Also, we decided to be capable of keeping multiple systems on one screen. So let's dive into the practical part. Uh, so let's create the first connection. Uh, there we have uh, a toolbar. Um, after we open it, there appears plus button here. Um, about which we talked on previous slide, and uh, there is one more button, button with range. Uh, so we have the only option to click one of these buttons. I think that the beginner will not decide uh, to click the range while having a plus. So we click it plus button. And here appears add connection dialog. So on this, uh, this step, we will uh, add connection to our system. You just need to provide basic information about uh, first of all, we need to provide uh, connection address. It's just the name of our connection. Uh, you can interpret it as just a connection name. Yeah, uh, intended to make it easier to dis distinguish connections from many of them in the future. So next, you need to provide uh, connection URL. Uh, it is just, oh, sorry, I need to return. Uh, it is just a URL to your ZSMF REST API. Uh, so let's provide it. Yeah. Uh, and then let's provide this your username and this your password. Sorry. Yeah. Um, let's go to the connection dialog. Also, uh, as you can see, uh, we have here accept self science SSL certificate checkbox. Um, I think lots of customers have self science certificate in uh, 
configure this map. That's why we added this checkbox and let's uh, 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 push uh, OK button um, and see what happens next. Yeah, uh, the, um, after all data provided and button pushed, then uh, appears in dialog of testing connection. So the plugin will validate this connection by sending an information request to your ZOSMF API. In case the URL is not healthy, uh, the user will be prompted by setting this URL uh, by manually, just assuming that everything is okay. So the plugin will add unhealthy connection firstly. And if everything is okay, that means that the server returned the correct, correct answer. It will move you to the next step. So let's see what we have in the next step. And here we have a working set dial. Uh, you, have, you may have a question. What is the working set? It is just a set of base masks and USS pass uh, within one connection. The only thing you have to provide here uh, is just a working set name. Let's provide it. Also, we have here a combo box with uh, our connections. If you uh, open it, uh, you might see all the connections that uh, you have created. Uh, and also we have here a list of our base masks. Uh, so let's add one DS mask and one USS path. We need here to change the selection of pass type, mask type. So after all done, we can open our working set, open mask, and the plugin will extract the data by corresponding mask. Yeah, it's such easy. So uh, let's take a closer look at the tree structure. Our root node here is a working set node. Uh, in this node, we have a working set name um, and some great attributes. Attributes. So it is this your username uh, that is used for this particular connection system name um, or connection name and uh, connection URL. For the data set node, you also have volume zero here uh, as additional info. So the goal of this attributes is to make this tree a bit more informative. Uh, we also don't want to overload, overload the user with this information. That's why we just provided uh, an essential one. Uh, and one more important thing is while you're extending some platform or write an application to your operating system, it is an essential task to reuse built-in components uh, as much as possible. So uh, we've got here an index HTML in the bottom. Uh, and you can see that uh, this file configured as HTML5 file uh, with the corresponding icon. Uh, and uh, it can uh, have been done automatically by intelligent platform. So we don't have any sort coded icons there. Let's take a look at one more thing that is available for you in case you try to reuse as many components that uh, your environment or system already has as possible. So uh, let's add a uh, member, but it's not part of our use case on this slide. So and uh, we will open this member. Uh, um, Let's choose, uh, let's open it. Uh, and in IntelliJ, you're able to have a look at the path of the current open file. Yeah, uh, it is uh, placed in a uh, left uh, high, uh, left side here. Um, let's take a look what happened next. So, Oh, sorry, I cannot stop it. Um, 
So uh, we uh, developed our own file system uh, for the IntelliJ platform. So you can see that uh, the root element of this system is for mainframe. Um, and uh, this system located as Vlad said, said in RAM. Uh, so you're also able to use every navigational feature of this uh, system uh, that's provided by IntelliJ component. So currently we have only one folder here, it is datasets. Uh, but in case we will add uh, USS pass uh, to our working set, uh, here will be uh, USS. Uh, also, we have uh, we can browse uh, data, each data set regarding to its volume serial. And also we are able to change member, member here. So uh, the, uh, we can change data set and uh, can change member, yeah, like this. Um, and also we can open another member using this navigational component. And that's all. So let's move to other uh, slide. And what about handling multiple system? Uh, that's pretty much nothing special here. So we just, I'm gonna create a new working set. Uh, to do it, we will firstly create a new connection. Uh, so in case you uh, in case you typed an existing connection name and your message appears and you will be prompted to rename your connection. So let's let's rename previous connection and add new. One. Um, sorry. And after we created the connection, let's skip this moment. Let's uh, also uh, uh, push plus button and uh, choose another connection here and uh, give uh, another uh, name to this working set. And uh, uh, also we can provide here a list of masks. And here, here we uh, in the structure appear at the new working set, we can open it and expand also this mask. And that's how it works. A multiple system on uh, one screen, I think, Pretty understandable. So it's also possible to make some base copy paste operations uh, and to provide some refactoring of data you are working on. Let's take a look, a look what we have in this case. We can provide here, for example, a rename operation. So as you can see, we predefined here some shortcuts. Uh, but for better understanding, we will use uh, click on the right mouse button. Uh, so let's rename the current member to ISM2. Yeah, ISM2. Oh, sorry, not member, but data set. And uh, this uh, mask will be refreshed automatically after naming. Uh, and here we have in properties uh, the name of this data set. Uh, has changed. Um, let's continue watching this use case. Okay. So it's also, we, we have also possibility to uh, move our member. It's, uh, we, ca uh, we can just push control X on the desired member. Uh, then push control V. So, uh, and here we have uh, data sets, uh, set was updated by moving. 
it's just how it works and so familiar to us operating systems such as Windows or Linux or Mac OS. Uh, so you can also edit some data. You can do it just like you edit any file in IntelliJ platform. Um, make a double click. Uh, and start editing the, the file. Um, there's only one restriction uh, to edit this file. Uh, you should have uh, permissions to write for this file. Also, as we said before, uh, we have reused IntelliJ components. So we can create, for example, an HTML file. Let's do that. New file, index.html. Uh, and IntelliJ will highlight HTML uh, and give hints to us. Of what can be placed here. Uh, especially it works not only with HTML files, uh, we can repeat it with Python files, Java files, JavaScript, and so on. There's also, we have uh, one more peculiarity. To demonstrate it, let's open up one more member and start writing some text here. Um, we've got a warning dialog. It means that uh, somebody went to mainframe after we loaded file content and changed this member. So when we start writing it for plugin, understands that there are some conflicts. It gives you an opportunity to accept changes from the mainframe or overwrite changes by yours. In our future roadmap, we want to make those. Uh, it, has, uh, it is implemented now in the Git. Uh, IntelliJ opens the dialog with three editor windows. On the first one, we have our saved, uh, our changes. On the second one, we uh, what will be saved to the main, mainframe. And on the third one, changes from remote. So a user can look uh, uh, and make a decision on how to update the file. And also it is possible to do some changes on newly created file, of course. So if we create the file, the member, for example, SM2, and open it, we also can edit and provide here some information. So let's, let's how we can uh, do some editing uh, operations and what I give you a word. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, uh, an indispensable thing when working with our plugin is uh, ZOSMF. With this thing, we can send uh, most of the commands to the mainframe in the form of simple REST API requests. This makes it pretty much easier to work with the mainframe from the outside. However, we uh, noticed uh, that many functions are duplicated uh, and queries themselves can be mapped uh, to entities uh, that are convenient to work with uh, through modern programming languages such as Java or Kotlin. Thus, uh, the idea arose to write a, a retrofit to Z library along the way. Uh, with this set of modules, we can execute queries on to the mainframe in a simple, convenient, and fast way without tons of boilerplate code. Also, we would like to share our experience and some things that perhaps could be quite useful to some. Any development is fraught with numerous obstacles, many of which have long been resolved for us. First, 
always read the documentation before you start working with any technology. Some things may seem pretty simple at first glance, but often they are not. Uh, and uh, the plugin uh, show us, uh, shows us how it is, uh, how it hard to uh, develop our own solution on the uh, IntelliJ SDK. Uh, so, uh, there are t uh, there are times when the documentation is not very good. Uh, then view the possibilities of the internet. If uh, the development uh, is interesting to someone else, uh, then there will certainly be those who want to study deeper. If uh, there are no such people, don't be afraid to be a pioneer. And also, don't be afraid to use other people's work as uh, the practice. Uh, the practice of uh, some companies shows uh, there are no bad programs, uh, there are untested ones. For those who think that uh, when combining open source solutions with the mainframe, security is lost and many vulnerabilities appear. If the programs didn't work and didn't before, they perform their tasks uh, no one would use them uh, in any case uh, the use of any technology is so associated with the multiple stages of its verification before implementation to the product <clears throat> in conclusion to the inspiring speech uh, the more you write code in different areas and products uh, the more people get help in their endeavors and uh, support and a sense of presence in the development world are important for people. Uh, therefore, do not be afraid uh, to bring in ideas, even if they suddenly turn out to be wrong. Uh, after all, if this happened, uh, then the source developer is wrong, uh, first of all, because uh, he made his technology not intuitive. And finally, I would like to present you with uh, some plugin roadmap. Of course, uh, some of the features are at the planning stage or only in our heads, uh, but uh, the very essence uh, is that our ideas and are there and uh, they will develop. In the foreseeable fu future, about a couple of weeks, uh, we plan to release update 0 0.5, which will include Chess Explorer and a copy operation between different data types. In addition, we are in close cooperation with uh, the Zoe development team. Uh, every two weeks, for the plans for integrating the plugin with the Zoe uh, platform are discussed. Uh, there is already an initial version of, of Zoe Kotlin SDK based on based on our platform uh, on our R two Z uh, library. Also, based on the plugin, Zoe community now has uh, Zoe Explorer for IntelliJ, uh, IntelliJ2, which our team continues to contribute to this day. Uh, for the next version, it is planned to start developing code highlighting for languages such as COBOL, PL1, GCL, Rex. Uh, it is planned to add uh, dataset presets and uh, edit view modes. It is also planned to provide the ability to copy between different remote system, uh, systems, uh, mainframe to mainframe. And already in uh, the distant future, we plan to support VSAM, DFSMS features, and other cool things that are still available only uh, for mainframers. Uh, so that's it for now. Uh, if you want to download the plugin, just uh, scan the QR code and uh, that's it. Uh, so uh, feel free to ask uh, any question. Thank you very much. Very interesting. Um, <clears throat> the, um, the the premise that you, you're talking about, this is for the the JetBrains tool toolkit, yeah? Their um their platform, IntelliJ and all the other ones that you talked about, C Lion and uh, for now, yeah. the pl plugin is available for IntelliJ and PyCharm, but uh, if it is needed, we can uh, add uh, support for other platforms of JetBrains uh, team yeah, and SDK. Actually, is there one platform for each editor, uh, mm -hmm. for example, for PyCharm, for IDEA? So 
we need to write code once and this code will be uh, executed on each platform on each uh, on each editor right so that's interesting because uh, um <clears throat> gives people the flexibility doesn't it i guess around um visual studio or eclipse and as you were outlining at the beginning so thank you for sharing this with us there aren't any questions in the chat um I'll give everyone 30 seconds if they want to quickly put something in the chat. Any questions? Um, the session was 4BA or Bravo Alpha for feedback. Um, and the next session, there is a lunch and learn at one o'clock. If anyone's interested, it's called SecOps. Saw and the mainframe. Why is it so hard? So that's a, a lunch and learn on the on the GSE. And thank you for attending this session. Um, and have a good rest of the GSE. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Bye.